Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm gonna find the right button here. Hey, glad to be with you this morning. I really am. After last night's storm, wow. I, you know, I, spring storms sometimes can be the most uh, amazing electrical storms. We had thunder and lightning like you can't believe. Starting, oh, it's well, it started about four thirty, five o'clock last night with some really good window shakers and then it kind of went off and on all night there's one point our, our bedroom window faces to the east and um, it sounded like somebody was throwing buckets of water against our window the rain was coming down so hard everything everything around the parsonage and the church is just saturated um, Bonnie was watching the garbage guy come in and there's an alley uh, next to the parsonage where we we put our garbage out in that alley and then there's another family down the alley a little bit puts their garbage out um and the the garbage man i think he went from one end of the alley to hand pick the garbage and then he went came around the other way to get it because the alley is just a mud pit right now i mean which is nice if you got a four-wheel drive and you want to play games but it's not so nice if you're driving a a garbage truck and gonna have to wind up getting towed out that would be bad so i didn't even look at the rain gauge to see what i had i should have done that but oh well i'll look later so good morning yeah and again we're continuing to rain a little bit although it's going to clear off here in an hour or so and then i guess we're supposed to get some storms again this afternoon so so good morning to everyone but my internet's working that's a that's a positive note um I saw Connie and Robbins may not have been. Hey, Geraldine and Neil, good morning to you. Kathy, good morning. Loretta, good morning. Hot, 100, but windy. Okay. Yeah, 100 degrees is hot. I don't care if there's wind or not. Good morning, Glenn and Ann. Glad you guys are here with us. There's Ashley. Good morning, Ashley. God's blessings to you, dear, on this Holy Wednesday. Jerry is uh, up in Adam. The tulips are coming up in Marlott. That sounds about right. That sounds about right. The ones close to buildings, at least. I don't think we've got any here to come up. I should. Maybe we should plant some for next year. Well, neither here nor there. Verna, good morning. Glad you're, glad you're here. Uh, there's Michael. Good morning. 86 for a high where you're at. So uh, you're not going to be quite as hot as we're. Oh, no, Loretta's in Texas. That's right. Loretta's in Texas. Well, Texas, 100 degrees, you know. That's what it is. Jill, and, oh, Jill good morning. John. John's off. Left, left you, huh? High and dry. Well, maybe not dry. <laughs> good morning to you guys. Connie and Robin, good morning. Glad your internet is, is back on for now. I'm sure you were swimming up there as much as we were because it was all headed headed north it seemed like it, it looked initially like it was just kind of going to go east and and ignore us but it kind of went north and east so good morning renee uh yeah you're you're yeah you're gonna get what we had i think um that's kind of how it goes and leela good morning glad all y'all are here with us on this holy wednesday as we uh, prepare to spend a little time in god's word so let's let's get down to that if you have a hymnal the lutheran service book page 295 there you find daily prayer for individuals and families the morning order and we begin in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen in the morning O lord you hear my voice in the morning i prepare a sacrifice for you and watch my mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day O lord open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. My head's a little sluggish today. I, I took my uh, muscle relaxers because I'm having some twinges, and they tend to make you a little dopey. Um, so I'm a little dopey. We'll see if my brain works its way through this stuff. Our psalm today... Psalm 89, 20 through 27. Psalm 89. Uh, oh, no, that's, yeah, Psalm 89. I have found David, my servant. With my holy oil, I have anointed him, so that my hand shall be established with him. My arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not outwit him. 
The wicked shall not humble him. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and my steadfast love shall be with him. And in my name shall his horn be exalted. All this will, all, oh, not all this, I will, <clears throat> I will set his hand on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. He shall cry to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. And I will make him the firstborn, the highest of the kings of the earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hey, there's John and Janet dropping in, and there's Brenda. Good morning to you guys. 65 in Kalamazoo. Oh, that's all right. We're going to drop off again. We're going to go in this 40-degree range through the low 40s, upper 30s, through Easter. Doesn't look like it's going to rain on Easter. My mom used to say that if it rains on Palm Sunday, it'll rain for the next six Sundays. Uh, and it didn't rain on Palm Sunday. So we might, you know, have good weather. But it rain, It looks like it's going to rain on, on Easter Monday. Um, and the, the week of the week following Easter, it looks like it's going to be cool here. But then it's going to warm up into the 50s um, for a while. So that'll be... That'll be good. Maybe maybe during that week I can get some work done on my truck engine and then get my exhaust manifold fixed. Our our um uh, yeah our 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 psalm. Uh, God is speaking about David now. He sends who does he send Samuel to anoint David with oil to mark him as king. Well, Saul is still king, right? But but God is already taking the Holy Spirit, uh, His Spirit, away from King Saul and putting it on David. Um, but it is it is God who establishes David as king, his arm that strengthens him, crushing his foes before him and striking down those who hate him. Um, did the scriptures refer to David as a man after God's own heart, um, which is an interesting turn of phrase, right? Uh, David desires to be faithful, um, and God chooses to exalt him. Um, in fact, his lineage, his line, of course, is where Christ comes from. Christ who sits on, on the, Christ who is the king forever, uh, uh, who sits on the throne. And David shall cry, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. And that's right, because he says, uh, he says um, that, that the Lord will, how does that go? The Lord is my son. And I bow down before the Lord. Anyway, there's, there's that there's that understanding that according to Christ's human nature, he's the son of David. Um, but according to his divine nature, he is Lord. Uh, he is, he is uh, David's Lord and God, Master. Good psalm today. Good psalm. Our reading today, Exodus chapter 10, verses 21 verse 21 through chapter 11, verse 10. Um, we're going to read, we're reading the ninth plague and the the um, threat of the 10th plague. So we're not to the 10th plague yet. That'll come tomorrow. So starting here at Exodus chapter 10, verse 21. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt a darkness to be felt. So Moses, Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven, and there was pitch darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days. But all the people of Israel had light where they lived. Then Pharaoh called Moses and said, Go serve the Lord. Your little ones may also go with you. Only let your flocks and your herds remain behind. But Moses said, You must also let us have sacrifices and burnt offerings, that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. Our livestock must also go with us. Not a hoof shall be left behind. For we must take them to serve the Lord our God. And we do not know with what we must serve the Lord until we arrive there. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let them go. Then Pharaoh said to him, 
get away from me. Take care never to see my face again, for on the day you see my face you shall die. Moses said, As you say, I will not see your face again. The Lord said to Moses, Yet one plague more I will bring upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterward he will let you go from here. When he lets you go, he will drive you away completely. Speak now in the hearing of the people that, that they ask, every man of his neighbor and every woman of her neighbor, for silver and gold jewelry. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people. So Moses said, Thus says the Lord, About midnight I will go out in the midst of Egypt, and every firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on his throne, even to the firstborn of the slave girl who is behind the handmill, and all the firstborn of the cattle. There shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there has never been nor ever will be again. But not a dog shall growl against the people of Israel, either man, uh, yeah, either man or beast, that you may know that the Lord makes a distinction between Egypt and Israel. And all these your servants shall come down to me and bow down to me, saying, Get out, you and all the people who follow you. And after that I will go out. And when and he went out from Pharaoh in hot anger, then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh will not listen to you, that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. Moses and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh, and the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not let the people of Israel go out of his land. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It says we should go read Lamentations chapter 3 as an additional reading. I'm not going to read it. Maybe I'll read it later. I haven't got time to read it right now. It's Lent. It's a holy week. Mm. <clears throat> so, ninth plague and the threat of another plague. Um, the ninth plague, darkness. Have you ever been in darkness that's so thick that you can't see anything? Uh, hey, Pa. Good to see you here. Uh, darkness so thick you can't see anything. You, you can't even sense what's around you. I mean, it's so dark, there's no reflections off of anything. And if you close your eyes... Uh, it's still not dark because the light around you shines on your eyelids and you can you can see that. Uh, they say even people who are are blind uh, through nerve damage, what's there, they still get sensations, not necessarily the light around them, but mistaken signals in their brain that that are interpreted as light that they that they still see things. I remember uh, one night when when Jean Luc, my older son, was a was a Cub Scout. Was he? Was, yeah, it was Cub Scouts. Uh, and we were sitting around the campfire. And one of the other scout leaders, who happened to be a, a lineman for uh, one of the big electric companies in the area, he was talking about how when he goes out to do line work, he doesn't use a flashlight because it's better to see in the dark than it is to have the blindness that comes from using a flashlight, right? Because if you're, if you're out camping and you go for a walk and you use a flashlight, you turn the flashlight off, you can't see for a while, right? And so he and I decided we walk somewhere, but he said, we're going to do it without a flashlight. And I said, okay, if, 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 if you choose to walk in darkness, I'm not going to turn on my flashlight and ruin it for you. After all, all I had was one of these little uh, free flashlights that you get from Harbor Freight. The little, the little nine LED runs on three triple A's. It lights up enough to give you a path, but that's all. I mean, I wasn't planning on doing any night hiking. It's Cub Scout for crying out loud. Uh, so I didn't have a I didn't have a big, you know, um, my good flashlight with me, shall I say? <clears throat> now I have headlamps and things, but uh, I, I so we we headed off into the woods, and I and I said I can't 
I can't see. I said, I'll follow your footsteps, but I can't see. And I walked with a hand out in front of me, right? And every time I felt a tree, I kind of knew where the path was. So every time I felt a tree, I kind of moved to the side of the tree that I knew the path was on to try and stay. And I knew, oh, 150 yards or so up when we got through the heavily wooded area, there's a road and there will be a, a security light above the building that we were going to. So I knew when we got there, uh, we would we would be able to see where we're going. And so we walked, and we went for three or four minutes, and all of a sudden, off to my right, unable to see anything, because it is it was a new moon night, the star was clouded over, the stars weren't out, we're under a canopy of trees in, in uh, midsummer. Uh, here in northern Wisconsin, as a matter of fact, up by mountain Wisconsin. Um, and all of a sudden, I hear off to my right, ow! I said, what's going on? Nothing. We're going to start using our flashlights. Well, he had walked smack dab into a tree. Darkness. It, you, you can't. Well, good morning, Linda. And and to Keith, if he's near you. And to Keith, if he's not near you. Uh, you, you darkness so dark that you can't see. You know, stuff that, that your toes cry out, as Bill Cosby used to say, your toes cry out because they know what's coming, right? They, they, they don't want you to walk around in the dark because they know they're going to run into something that you can't even sense the walls around you you don't know how big the space is around you because it's so dark that's what the that's what the egyptians were experiencing god took all light didn't take their sight from them he just removed light from the land of egypt how did he do that i don't know he's god right um, there are those that would try to explain, well, the, the moon was in line with the phases of, of the stars and this and that, and so the dark, it was God. And he said, over this area, no light. Because up in Goshen, north of, north of Ramses, uh, there was light. The Israelites still had light, which means if, if the Egyptian could make it out of the darkness into the light, they'd be in the light because the Israelites were there, right? Why is there light in Israel? Well, because they're God's people. God is light. Darkness is the absence of God. Uh, remember, I said yesterday, the Egyptians, uh, the Egyptian Pharaoh and the Egyptians as a people, they still honor other gods. They don't deny the existence of the other gods, right? We've got atheists who so argue so vehemently against, uh, against God. It's like, well, if you don't believe in God, why are you arguing with me, right? There's no sense in arguing with me about something you don't believe exists. And the fact that you're having the argument means that you believe he exists. You just don't understand him. So darkness, three days, three days. And all you can do is sit because what happens? If you get up and start walking around in the dark and you don't know where you are, what happens? Your eyes aren't going to adjust because it's perfect darkness pitch black. Reminds me of a movie. Um, but after three days, the light is, returns and, and Pharaoh calls Moses into him and says, I'm done with this. Go. You take your, take your um, little ones with you. You may go. Your little ones may go. Um, but leave your flocks behind. He's just looking for security to know that they're going to return. Right? He's just he's looking for a deposit. He's looking for something to, to give him the assurance that his, his servants, his slaves, aren't going to, to leave him. And, you know, their big fear at the beginning of all of this, right, at, at the beginning of the book of Exodus, the fear is that the number of Israelites that have, have come to be now um, through the natural purpose, purchase, natural, through birth, right, they've, they've multiplied, Um because there's so many of them, their fear is if they join with an enemy, they'll turn against against Egypt and fight with the enemy. Um, but they're not fighting against Egypt. They're just asking to be let go, right? They never raised their, none of the Israelites, other than Moses killing one of the guards way back when, um, they never raise a hand to Israel. This is all God smiting Israel with these plagues so that first, or smiting Egypt with these plagues so that the world, Everyone in the world at that time, and now because we have it recorded in scriptures, because Moses wrote it down for us, has a witness to the power and authority of God that he can take a just an area of the earth and make it pure darkness, right? 
oh, well, that's just uh, the moon moved in front of the sun and it was the eclipse of the sun. And so there was, yeah, but that even that's not total darkness. A full eclipse is not perfect darkness. It's not perfect darkness. Um, I mean, they had fires and lamps and candles for a night, but those things wouldn't cast any light either. This is, this is supernatural. This is God at work above nature, his authority. So Pharaoh calls him in and says, okay, you, you, can, you can take your little ones and go leave your livestock here. Nope, no. Nope. We need our livestock because we're going to have to make offerings to our God. And we don't know what the offering is going to be until we get to the place where we're going. God will command the offering when we arrive there. We don't, we don't know. what It's probably going to be sheep or goats or oxen, but we've we got to have them all with us. We don't know how many he's going to command of us. Uh, what, and, and, you know, we're going to be traveling all this distance, and, and the only things qualified for sacrifice to God are those things which are unblemished. What if we take, you know, five goats and five oxen and five sheep, and we get there, and two of them are lame by the time we get there and have injuries, and 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 God commands us to sacrifice ten of each. You know, what are we going to do? Uh, we got to take all of them. We take all of them. Uh, admittedly, Moses is also making an excuse to get them out of there, but this is the game that Pharaoh is playing with with God's people. But Pharaoh's mad. He hardened, his heart is hardened again, turned away from God, turned away from Moses, and he's and he's mad. He's as mad as he has been in all of these things. He is completely angered and he said, "You know what? You can't go. Get out of my house and if I ever see you again, I will kill you. You will die." It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. God protects Moses from that. And so the Lord tells Moses of the next plague, but he didn't tell him what it is, right? We know what it is. We know what it is, and we know how Israel is going to come through that plague. And we're going to talk a lot more about that Thursday and Friday, right? Because there's a connection between Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, and the Exodus, the, the day of Exodus from, from Egypt. Exodus means going out when the people leave. But God tells tells Moses, look, the next plague, after the next plague, Pharaoh is not going to refuse to let you go. In fact, he's going to drive you out. He's going to push you out. He's going to be so upset that he's going to send you away forcibly. But before that happens, before that happens, I want, oh, he does say, that's right. I, you know, I read, I said, I said muscle relax. It's a little... Well, shaky up here. Um, about midnight, I will go to the midst of Egypt, and every firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. I did read that, didn't I? So he did tell him what it was going to be. The firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on the throne, the firstborn slave girl at the handmill, the firstborn of the cattle. So Egyptians, uh, animals, the firstborn of anything is going to die. And the cry will be so great that they will... They will drive the people of Israel out, but not even a dog will bark at Israel. Nobody's going to yell at you. There's going to be no calamity. There's going to be no violence against Israel. But you're going to be driven out. They're going to want you to go. And I say, get out. Take your, take your families, your flocks, your households, your tents, your belongings, and go. But before you do, God says, I want you to go every Israelite to their Egyptian neighbor and ask for gold and silver jewelry. Right? God is making them ready to make the tabernacle when they're out, the, the tent of meeting, the holy place uh, for when they go out. So I want you to, to do that, and these things will come. And so Moses and Aaron have done everything that God had commanded them to do, and these wonders were done uh, before Pharaoh, uh, and he didn't let the people of Israel go. But this last plague, the tenth plague, it's interesting that it's ten. I mean, ten is a ten is a number of completeness, right? Ten is the uh, ten is a fulfillment number. I'm a little surprised that it was ten, not seven. Three wouldn't be enough to carry out the effect, but ten is a ten is definitely a number of of completeness. Things are complete when you hit ten, right? I mean, we 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 live in a decimal world, a, a, a ten based world, right? There are scientists that say 12 would be a better basis, and some people do stuff in 12, right? How, how do you how do you buy um, eggs? You buy them by the dozen, not by the 10. Why? I don't know. 
I don't know. Somebody made that decision down the road. Um, you buy donuts by the dozen. Now I'm hungry. Yeah, Bonnie said here in the United States, and that's probably a good point. And there's even something called a baker's dozen, where the where the where you buy a dozen donuts and the baker throws in an extra one, you get 13, which would be unlucky in some places. Yeah, now I want donuts, but I, I've got stuff to do today. Um, but the, the point is, is that is that Moses and Aaron continue to do uh, what God has told them. They remain faithful to God, and the, the people of Egypt, uh, especially Pharaoh, continue to be hardened against the Israelites so that all these signs and wonders that God had commanded are, are brought to completion amongst Egypt so that they would see God's authority and know his, his power. Uh, and, and when they leave, the people around Israel, as they leave, the people of Israel, once they once they've crossed out of the land of Egypt into the into the into the wilderness, the desert, literally the desert of sin. The, the desert is called the desert of sin. Um, on the to the south, be the southwest of the Negev. Um, literally, all that time, the nations around them will fear Israel and not attack them. They'll stay away because God has done these things. God keeps his people safe. That's that's the whole story of Scripture. That's the whole narrative of Scripture, is God working salvation for mankind ultimately through the death and resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ. I'm not just tacking the cross on the end there, because all of this is going to link us back to the cross, or forward to the cross, or the cross links us back to the events in Egypt. So let's, um, wow, now my mouth is dry. Let's, uh, let's continue with our, our prayer for today when I find it. You know, I like this mug, but it's not that great for drinking out of sometimes. Let us pray. Most merciful and everlasting God, you did not spare your only son, but delivered him up for us to bear our sins upon the cross. Grant that our hearts may be so fixed with steadfast faith in him that we fear not the power of sin, death, and the devil. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we turn to, I'm, I'm using my maroon prayer book here, um, but these, these prayers that I have for Holy Week, uh, this this Holy Wednesday. Lord Jesus Christ, gracious Savior, I come to you in this sacred week to ponder upon your great and wondrous love. Love that led you to the cross, that my sin might be blotted out, and that I might be reconciled to my Heavenly Father. O Christ, give me strength and grace to crucify my sinful desires and dedicate myself anew to you who has loved me with an everlasting love and brought me, brought to me eternal salvation. I confess to you my sins. They are many, and you know each and all. For each and every one of them, you suffered the agony of the cross and shed your precious blood, that I might be cleansed and made acceptable in your sight. Let me not go through this day unmindful of your great love, let none of the sins of yesterday cling to me. Humbly I come seeking your mercy. Let me fulfill the tasks and duties to which you have called me with joy, confessing you as my Lord and Savior and being of service to my neighbor. Grant that your suffering and death proclaim for the salvation of mankind may, by the power of the Holy Spirit, awaken in many a deeper love for you. O oh Lord, have mercy upon me, and all sinful mankind, and create in me and all that seek you a clean heart, holy desires, and an undying love. Hear my prayer, gracious Redeemer. Amen. And we continue with a confession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You got things a little out of order there, but you know what? Sometimes you got to stir it up, see if you're paying attention. And for those who are suffering during this most holy of weeks, those who suffer under the under the, the strains and difficulties of war in Russia and the Ukraine, those in the Middle East who are, who are um, suffering under the oppression as Christians, for those in China who, are, who, who confess the name of the Lord and yet are caused to live in darkness, hiding it. And to all those who suffer that we know in body, mind, or soul, we ask, Lord, that you would grant them mercy, especially Ashley, Peter, Karen, Olive, James, Pat, Lois, Don, Brianne, and all who call upon your most holy name in faith and in hope, knowing that you have given all things to us through your blood shed upon the cross. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things on this day, when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end. That all our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our devotions to a close for this Holy Wednesday, April 13th. God's blessings to you all, and we'll see you here tomorrow. I have... Uh, Tomorrow starts all the services for Holy Week, and I have a Bible study at Grace Lodge. That's about the, well, that and the ladies' aid today here at St. Paul are the only things I kept on course with for the week. So you probably will have a pre-recorded devotion tomorrow morning, but that's okay. It'll be, it'll be on the stuff that I want to talk about. It might be a little longer because of the topic we're covering. Uh, where we're coming in now to that final plague. But either way, God's peace be with you, and we will, well, you'll see me for sure uh, tomorrow morning. God's peace.